Good evening, I'm Jim Lara. Finally tonight, a spellbinding competition and a Ray Suarez. Deloid. B-D-E-L-L-O-I-D. -E Deloid. The word means like or relating to a leech. And correctly spelling it just put 14-year-old Finola Hackett a step closer to being crowned the Queen Bee of this year's annual Scripps National Spelling Bee, a competition that's always been popular but has gained more and more attention in recent years. This May, roughly 275 regional champs descended on Washington, D.C. for the annual event. The contestants hail from all 50 states and sometimes use their own peculiar methods to survive to the next round. And international competitors travel from as far away as New Zealand to throw their hats in the ring. The prize? A big trophy. Big checks, totaling over $37,000 and bragging rights for a lifetime. Since 1994, the B has been broadcast exclusively on the cable sports network, ESPN. But this year, as it grows in ratings, the B makes its debut on ESPN's broadcast parent network, ABC, on its primetime lineup tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. Only on ABC. The two-hour finale also includes many profiles of the contestants. I am Samir Patel, and I'm a verba maniac. The competition switch to prime time was the latest in the growing buzz around the bee. It's also inspired big screen hits. Logoria. L-O-G-O-R-R-H-E-A. That is correct. The 2002 documentary and Academy Award nominee Spellbound Last year's B season, based on a best-selling novel by the same name, and Aquila and the Bee, released this April. You want to win what? I want to win an Afro-Spelling Bee! Yes. A fictional account of an African-American girl from the inner city of Los Angeles who wins the National Bee. Bee Fever has even hit Broadway. The musical, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, won two Tony Awards last year. In the meantime, tonight these 13 finalists will have a chance to become a celebrity in their own right, provided they get their ABCs in the right order. For more about the B and the students who participate, I'm joined by James McGuire, author of the book American B, the National Spelling Bee, and the Culture of Word Nerds. Well, why do spelling bees suddenly seem to be in the national cultural fast lane? What happened? They are big right now. We have sort of a little boomlet in spelling bees. I think the thing that really sparked it was the 2002 uh, spelling documentary, Spellbound. But I think the thing that has really enabled it to catch on is, uh, you know, the spelling bee is the original reality TV show. And, of course, reality TV is very big right now. I kind of hate to make that a comparison because I think the spelling bee has a lot more value than a lot of reality TV. But it's very similar. You know, we go round by round. Spellers are eliminated. We sort of get to know the spellers and their little idiosyncrasies. And finally, we get to those last few rounds and we see, you know, who's going to win. Well, this afternoon, a lot of spellers were eliminated. They've gotten down to uh, the final 13. Right. Uh, from what you saw in your reporting, mm -hmm. what are those kids likely to be doing in these final hours before they head to the big final round? Right. Well, of course, worrying and being anxious and tense, to be sure. But uh, probably some last-minute studying. I mean, what these kids do to be able to handle these large words is they really do a lot of uh, root word work. So they study, you know, roots of, you know, Latin, Greek, French, German, Italian, Spanish. You know, that way they can spell words they've never actually seen before. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that because to be a speller at this level, you can't just be a good reader or someone who's gradually acquired a, a wide vocabulary. You have to do special prep, no? You really do. I mean, the the uh, B organizers put out something called the Consolidated Word List, which is 23,000 words long. And these top spellers, most of the kids tonight, will have memorized that entire 23,000 word list. So they've memorized an enormous amount. They know their word roots. And of course, there's also an element of luck. I mean, there's no way around that because in the Webster's Underbridge Dictionary, there's 475,000 words. And so, you know, you never know what word you're going to get or what word your competitor is going to get. And there's always upsets every year. So you could go out on a word that if you had been one kid ahead or one kid behind, you would have gotten. You know, you know the winds of fate really blow unpredictably at the bay. 
Well, you call it uh, in your subtitle the culture of word nerds. Right. Are these kids like a tribe apart, a different cut of kid? You know, these these are kids who really love to study. Many of them, which you know, call that an unusual trait, but they they study off you know seven times seven uh, days a week, uh, you know, month after month, uh, sometimes you know year after year, and they finally make it to the B. Um, you know, after I've talked with a lot of them, though, I found out that they're a lot more normal than you might expect when you actually get to know the kids. I mean, they're they're more well-rounded. They're just very, very interested in this one topic. They disproportionately are drawn from immigrant families, families from South and East Asia. Right. Have you thought about why? Yeah. Well, you know, Indian Americans are very, very strong at the B, and of course, uh, an Indian American boy won in 1985, and I think it inspired a lot of immigrant pride. I think. Recent Indian immigrants said to themselves, "Well, if one of our own can win this quintessentially American contest, then we really want to be, you know, interested in this." So Indian Americans put a lot of uh, emphasis on it. Actually, of the last seven championships, five have been won by Indian Americans. That's a tremendous number. Yeah, it re really, it's a very strong presence of Indian Americans at the National Spelling Bee. There are some knocks on the bee. One that uh, rote learning is prized over real comprehension and and knowing what these words mean. Well, the thing is, you know, these kids have a sprawling vocabulary. I mean, there's a lot of homonyms there. And so if you are just doing rote memorization, you don't make it to the finals. You might make it to the National B, possibly, but to get to the final rounds, it, it is really all about understanding. But on the other hand, uh, having just brought in a criticism, I guess I should say that it's nice to see kids that age celebrated for something other than athletic prowess or being pretty. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing I really love about it. I mean, it, it is not just spe spelling. You know, it's etymology. It's vocabulary, it's parts of speech. You know, the B really encourages reading, and all these kids are really big readers. So, I mean, I love the fact that it's on prime time. It's going to advertise the idea of, you know, studying and reading and learning. Is this a harder competition to win than it would have been 20 or 40 years ago? Oh, it's far harder. You know, if you look back at some of the earlier decades, the words were much easier. I mean, the, the word knack was the winning word one year, you know, K N A C K. You know, therapy was the winning word one year. But, you know, that was, you know, in simpler times, kids just showed up and spelled. Now these kids are really working year-round, so those kind of words would just be, you know, round one or two words. Well, how do they handle the pressure? I mean, they are, what, 9 to 15 years old or so, and um, they seem to be handling themselves quite well on national television. Are there some who yeah. aren't handling the pressure that you way? You know, handling the pressure is a big part of it, and it is difficult for these kids. I, I know they really feel the stress of it, but... If you look at the winners and, and the top finalists, these are kids who can really handle pressure, and it's it's really sort of distinguishes the kids who can dispel well from the kids who can really you know handle the trial by fire. Are there any cases that you came across where kids were really sort of heavily burdened by this, and it wasn't fun anymore? Well, I've seen some kids. There was one boy last year that I know is extremely well prepared. He had just studied and studied and studied, and it was an early round, and he came across a word that was not too hard. And he just sort of psyched himself out. He spelled it really rapidly even before he thought. And you could just see him sort of bolt upright like, oh, no, I've blown it. Because, you know, the pressure got to him. James McGuire, thanks a lot. Thanks, Ray.